had to look at today's devotional two or three times because I was cracking up about it. I thought it was so funny that I just couldn't believe it. I had to reread it. And then I had to look it up in the Bible to make sure that the Bible says so. And I had to double check it and kind of think about it for a while to make sure I was right. Because sometimes, you know, you read these things and you know what they say and you go, okay, well, you know, that makes perfect sense, you know. You know, scriptures like, there is none righteous, no, not one, or all men are liars, the truth is not in them, or that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, you know. And we, we say those things, you know, we, we read those things, we consider them, we ponder them, we use them on people, you know, we tell people that, hey, you know what, church isn't a place for perfect people, it's for forgiven people, you know, and we say all those things, but we act like <laughs> we want perfect specimens. You know, I mean, we want somebody to clean up their act and look like, hey, you know what, you got it all together. We want you. Or, you know, we put these guys up on the top pedestal, you know, like maybe a Jeremy Lin or a Tim Tebow. Or, heck, I don't know. You pick your favorite movie star or your favorite Christian, you know, and you put them on a pedestal and watch how fast God knocks that pedestal out from under them. <laughs> I know that everybody was going, oh, the miracle football team. And then the miracle ended. Oh, oops. He wasn't that good a quarterback, but he was a Christian. <laughs> you see, it's not about perfection. It's not about how many passes you can throw or how many hoops you can toss in or anything that you can do in your flesh. Really, what it is is about you being screwed up and the fact that you accept the fact that you're screwed up so that God can take care of it. Because, you see... That's what the point of salvation is. It isn't about you cleaning up your act. It's about God getting you to realize that you can't clean up your act. And that the only thing you can do is turn it over to Him and let Him do what He does best, which is clean up your act. So you get it? It's kind of like Act 1, Scene 1. Give it to God. Act 1, Scene 2. Give it to God. Act 1, Scene 3. Give it to God. As a matter of fact, all three acts are all the same. God acts. Not you. That's his job, not your job. Your job is to let go and not act like you're perfect. Because you know what? You're not. Relax. Enjoy it. Come along for the ride. That's kind of what I got out of this devotional. I was like, wow. What are we worried about? What are you really worried about? I mean, come on. Do you really want to be like that perfect person over there that you think is perfect? Because you have no idea what's going on inside. Or do you really want to be like, you know, this righteous person that you think is righteous? Because you really have no idea how righteous they're falling <laughs> from grace. Or would you rather just kind of like experience the love and the forgiveness? Because the only really way to experience forgiveness is to screw up. <laughs> you can't be forgiven unless you blow it. <laughs> Believe me, you blow it a lot. Jesus had it covered. Peter comes up to him and says, man, you know what? I'm tired of this stuff. You know, these guys are all a bunch of losers, you know, with an L. Loser, you know, and he said, how many times do I got to put up with these losers? Seven times, you know? Man, if he comes to me and shows me how much he's lost it, you know, how many times do I got to deal with this? When can I just tell him to put up, shut up, get out of my life, get away from me, and leave me alone? Jesus said, oh, I don't know. Maybe, what do you think? Peter says, well, I don't know, seven times? Jesus says, make it 70 times 7 in a day. What? Are you kidding me? 490 times? I can't even count that high. I'll forget by the time I hit 480. <laughs> I hope you're kind of getting the message here. Really? You're going to screw up. You're going to mess up. You're going to blow it. You're going to lose it. You are a loser. But in God, you get to win because in the end, we win. In the meantime, well, you're kind of dealing with sin. And that fact that you're dealing with it is how and why God will forgive you. Because you're willing to admit it. Don't deny it. Don't hide it. Don't say, hey, look, let's be real for a minute. If you're, if you're a child molester you know, and you want God, admit you're a child molester and tell him you want God. Somebody somewhere is going to accept you just the way you are, love you, and say, Look, I know you're screwed up. Yes, you have a problem. We will work on it together. And they will love you the way you are. 
if you're a, I don't know, a murderer or whatever, and you're in prison or something, and you want God in your life, hey, admit it. Admit you're a murderer. Admit that you did the sin, you're paying the time, you're doing the crime, you're going to wind up, if it's you know death penalty, dying or whatever. But don't try to get out of it. Just admit it to God. Hey, look, I did it. It's true. God already saw it. He already knew. But you can deal with it once you admit it. Because, you see, everybody screws up. Everybody screws up. Everybody. How many times can I say everybody? Everybody loves somebody sometimes. No, but everybody screws up at some point in time in their life. I must screw up. Give me five minutes alone. Man, I'll screw up. I'll trip right over my own feet. Unless God picks me up. Or says, Michael, you got your feet crossed. Watch out. Boom. Damn. Oh, well, I guess I didn't listen that time. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll listen once my nose gets big enough. Because I keep hitting it against the wall or against the floor. One way or another, I seem to always be smacking into something. You know, God's hand, bam, bam, bam. You know, Lord, I don't think I'm supposed to go that way. God says, no, try the other way. Oh, well, that was easy. Gee, you think maybe I ought to go the easy way? Or should I go the hard way? <laughs> I think I know the hard way. I recognize it. It's got kind of like somebody's hand in the way. Yeah, it does. God. So, don't be surprised if you're used to doing things the hard way. If you're used to doing things the wrong way. If you're used to falling down more than you're used to standing up. And when you are, don't worry about what other people are doing, you know? They're working on it themselves because they don't got it together. I don't care if you pick, you know, whatever great evangelist, whether Greg Laurie or Chuck Smith or James MacArthur or Billy Graham or anybody, you know, not one of them are righteous, you know? Jesus in them is perfect, but they're not perfect. They're imperfect. They, they don't got it together. They got the best that they know, and that's why they preach and teach grace. Because they know who they are. Because, you see, the longer you've been a Christian, the more you realize you cling to grace, and the less you look for hanging on to the law and what the law will do for you. Behold, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returns not thither, but with it watereth the earth, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. But I'm the one sending it. God has, this is the best line of the whole devotional, and I'll leave you with this thought. God has concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. How many is all? Can you tell me how many all is all? Is all all or is all just some all? Because I want to know if some all is some or all or just some all or some times all doesn't mean all, because I think all means all, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe all means some, and some doesn't mean all, but okay, let's just get to some of it all. All is all. God has concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Get it? All unbelief. God concluded all will have mercy. Hey, oh the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. You can't judge. Don't judge your brother. Don't judge your friend. Don't judge yourself. Don't act like you know what God is doing. Because God, being the judge, can't be found out. Can't be understood. His mercy endures forever. His love is shed abroad in all of our hearts. That is the love that God wants us to have. That is why he said he has concluded everyone is guilty as sin. So that he could have mercy upon everyone. So you know, if you're walking today and talking today and acting today like you're some kind of righteous person, wrong! Guess what? You're not righteous, nor are you holy. As a matter of fact, you're living by just the grace and mercy of God. 
And by His mercy and grace is how you have any kind of relationship at all. So, when you go to God, I don't think you really have to worry about being too humble, because once you get in the presence of God, you'll realize how humble you should be, because you will be aware of your own sin. And believe me, that's where it begins. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Then let Him lift you up, not you lift yourself up. Because when you get puffed up, believe me, when that hot air goes out, wham, you hit the ground again. And that's the way it is. <laughs> you live by grace. You live by the mercy of God. Otherwise, you ain't living. You're just faking it. And when you're faking it, believe me, everybody around you knows. They see the self-righteous righteousness and, you know, how, oh, I got it together. And you really don't, because we just don't want to tell you that, you know what? God sees the heart, and so do we sometimes. Because there, but for the grace of God, go I, and we look and see, oh, what, what should we do? The same comfort with which we were comforted, we want to comfort you, but you won't let us. So, may I give you a word? You're a sinner. Every day you'll blow it some way. You're not perfect. Ooh. That don't sound like the gospel. Yes, it does. The good news is this. God forgives you. He shed His grace and mercy to everyone. Ooh. I kind of like that kind of God. Don't you? <laughs>